what an idiot. <laughs> See that coming a mile off. Come on, Rangers. Come on, Rangers. the whole game. With the local cricket team still playing on Child's Village Common, Child FC's nomadic starts of the season sees their third consecutive away game take place in Uckfield, a picturesque town in East Sussex that rests upon the River Uck. They may be newly promoted, but Child have taken maximum points from two tough opening fixtures, and finding such an idyllic location for today's game, against a team who are yet to win, would only increase the bounce in their step. And while results have been positive, Child manager Peter Barkley is keen to tease more out of his side, believing that they've yet to truly display the qualities that got them into the Mid-Sussex Premiership. Boys, honestly, I'm buzzing today. There's absolute carpet out there. Big pitch. Last week we had to play on that little postage stamp. We had to play a team that wanted to sit back and try and prevent us from playing. Resilience, perseverance, crack through it. Crack through it. First game of the season, 2-1 down at half-time. Last week, level pegging at half-time. Improving every game. This week, we're going to be leading by half-time. Here's the team. Murph's coming in at right-back. Dino, just play right side for me. All right, I'll explain why. Tyler alongside him. Joshy doing a job at full back. Now we know he hasn't got a left foot, right? So just give him a bit of a, uh, a break sometimes on his left peg. He's going to do a job out there. And Josh, all I want you to do is be destructive and stop them crossing the ball. All right, and we've got it. Can you play on your right? And when he's hitting those ones, Jay, obviously they're curling that way. So just try and give yourself a bit more wiggle room, Josh, if you can. Justin on the right side. Mike and Tommy in the middle there. Paley just in front. Jamie on the left. And Lockie back up top. <laughs> Ollie Bailey. And the big dog Easto back on the bench. Boys, front foot, let's get at them like we do, but be patient. I said be ruthless in the group. And what I mean by that is, hit them, don't get involved. Accept the decision. Clinical in front of goal. Let's test the keeper early. Let's get crossed in the box early. But let's let them know that we're here to really kind of cause some damage offensively today. Squeeze in the play. And let's come in at half time once the game's 45 minutes old with a goal in us, showing that we're on the front foot from the start. All right, boys? Thank you. Yeah, I feel good. I feel good. I mean, it's a potential banana skin. They're bottom of the league. We're two from two. So there's always that fear in football, which is why I love the game. But I'm trying to take a bit of emotion out of it and try and be a bit more calmer myself um, and hopefully get a bit more relevant information across. So I want us to play today. I want us to show them how good we are today and... The performance is really important from the start because we have been improving each week, but we need to be ruthless. Like I've told him in the WhatsApp group, we need to show our cutting edge. And I want to accept referees' decisions. I want to be that team where they go, they are respectful, and we leave the place thinking they're a decent, professional, good outfit today, and not getting involved in pettiness and letting emotion kind of, which I'm guilty of, uh, getting getting the better of us. And they are wolves in my eyes. They are a pack, and they do fight, and I love that. I love that. But then maybe they also echo me in my arguing and my, my emotions getting the better of me at times. So let's see today if I can set the stall out that we're going to play football with 110% like we do. But we're going to accept things. We're going to be professional. You have to remember everything. We've got to be more clinical all over the park. I want to see us move the ball around. I really want to show a, a good performance today. The result will come, but I don't want us to start flat. I want us to start on the front foot, and I want us to really use this large space out here. We start, and we summon that aggression from deep in the pit. We make the game come alive. We don't make it a jolly up. We make it meaningful. We've driven an hour to get here. We've worked all week for three points today. We do not start flat. We start like it means something, because guess what? It means something. Let's have it. From the off, boys, summon it. Charles' previous two games got off to slow starts, so Josh Forgery's incisive cross in the opening minutes helped set a different tone. 
Normally a reliable goal machine, Kevlock couldn't quite convert this one. The miss is soon forgotten, as Jamie Liddell wins his team a penalty for the third consecutive match. I mean, he didn't let go, he had him and he could have got away with that, but he just didn't let go. Can't fault that! Can't fault that! Brilliant start! Do not take your foot off! Do not take your foot off! Keep the tempo! Uckfield react to the setback and begin to get a foothold in midfield, although they struggle to create a meaningful opportunity. Although he's yet to score this season, Mercurial winger Jamie Liddell has arguably had the biggest impact and a Macy run that deserves a better finish at the very least offers a glimpse of his potential. Well done Josh, growing into it Josh, well done! Superb Mike Tommy, Josh great start, Dino Ty tremendous! A robust but fair challenge on new signing Justin Ford leaves the winger with a damaged ankle. Bailey warm up, Ollie warm up. You're right, Just knee. Push again, inside of my right hand here. It's a disappointing early end for Ford, but it does allow youngster Ollie Tennant a chance to impress. Yeah, right back. Right back. Right back. Right back. Yeah. Meanwhile, on the pitch, it's a game of decent chances. Oh, Tyler. James Tyler's wayward header probably should have hit the target, while Uckfield aren't afraid to sling the ball into the box themselves. Spotting a lack of controversy, Aaron Singh decides it's time to set some up playing a ball over the top for Luke Parsons, who gets there ahead of keeper Zach Rice, before falling to the ground like a jogger with tangled shoelaces. No! What? Outside the area! He's taken a shot of goal, Ref, and missed it. He's fallen in there, yeah, after two rolls. He's had a shot of goal, fallen over and got a penalty. About 10 yards outside the box. Is he all right now, the seven? He looks a bit naughty, that one. Are you all right? Never win it and take it though, don't you have that rule lads? Unlucky. Never get fouled and take it. <laughs> Ignoring Barks' rule, Parsons' penalty clatters back off the post and Chow would survive. But there's still time for more trouble. On the stroke of half time, Uckfield's Morgan Vale loses his cool, lashing out at Chowood midfielder Mike Smith like a cat who has grown tired of playing with its owner's hand. When you have a ref with blue trainers on, you got to worry, and you? you do, yeah. It's, a, it's an alarm bell, that one. He's kicked out him, ref, that's why. The referee is more concerned at Smith's reaction and his demand for a free kick rather than the upfield striker's petulance. That's a joke, I've seen him kick you there. Smith gets 10 minutes in the sim bin while Vale gets away without censure. For me. Yeah, go on, I'm listening to you. Right. For, for, for me. It was 50-50, they've gone in for the yeah, ball here, yeah? I appreciate that. So he's then, as the ball's gone away, yeah. you fucking Can hit I just say, thought, right? So at that point, yeah. I could have red carded him. Right, okay. For the, for the okay. swearing. Okay. So I've saved him a red card, okay. but he's got 10 minutes. All right. All right. Can I just say, I, yeah. pre I appreciate I'm not having to swear at you no, like that, no, and I'll tell him. But what you didn't see, as the guy fell, yeah. he kicked yeah, him in yeah, the back, right and, right and he made it like a yeah. fall, you know what I mean? That's why he got, because right Mike doesn't get angry like that. Fine, I understand that. However, I've not seen that. And all I appreciate I've, that, yeah. And all I've got is him. No, I appreciate that. Yeah, I'm just telling you, that's yeah. why, that's yeah, why, because yeah. he, he doesn't get like that. Yeah. No, so as the nine's fallen, he's given him one of them yeah. in the back. That's well, all. I just told him, like, he didn't see it. I just said to him, I saw him kick you. Yeah, Ten yeah. minutes, yeah. <laughs> yeah, half time for your touch, wouldn't it? <laughs> <laughs> we take some of those chances. We're sitting here 4 1 up and we're all feeling a bit differently. We've had a back post header from half a yard. Kev's had two or three that I put my mortgage on him tucking away. A couple of times, Jamie Murphs, I, just, I know you said it was spinning, just want to let it fly and hit it. And I, and I used the word ruthless before the game, and I think we'd be more like toothless, to be honest with you. You know, ruthless in front of goal. That wasn't ruthless in front of goal, lads. The goal is eight foot wide, eight foot high, and we're hitting it over those trees. We're clearing those trees from the penalty spot. This is a big three points. It's a big three points, boys. Who knows what's going on at Hollington right now? I need a bit more, and you've got, and I said to you before the game, summon it from somewhere, or when you sat behind the computer, or when the alarm went off at R5, summon it. 
We've got 45 minutes now to do something we love. Put some passion into it. Make a challenge. Have a go at someone. Stick it in the back of the net. Put something into this half, lads. Leave it out there. Come on. Put something into it. With Mike Smith in the sim bin, Uckfield looked to make the most of the extra man. Jamie Liddell risks making it two extra men with a scissor kick takedown that the ref bizarrely ignores. Morgan Vell then has a decent chance, but his effort is blocked by the foot of Zach Rice. Aaron Murphy then plays arguably the pass of the season. Liddell races through to get his first goal of the season and Charles would take a comfortable 2-0 lead. Much better this off, bit more bars, come on! In an effort to add to his litany of errors, the referee then gives a third penalty of the game, this time for the ball hitting a defender's thigh. Come on! We've come alive boys, we've actually woken up here. Keep Mike off, they're saying the fans. <laughs> Ref, can we take it or what? Don't let him talk to you like that, ref. Yes! What an idiot. <laughs> See that coming a mile off. The fourth penalty that the referee gives is probably the first one he's got right. This could go over. Bailey, get warm. Stephen Payne redeems himself and Chow would have a three goal cushion. It's not until the 72nd minute that Arkfield throw the shackles to the ground and start playing like a team. Incisive running and midfield battling creates a chance for Aaron Singh whose long-range drive finds the bottom corner. The home side begin to believe that an unlikely comeback could well be on. Despite being two goals up, Zach Rice is on the end of some barbed comments and reacts as you might expect. With a view to seeing the game out, Barks brings off Jamie Liddell, much to his frustration, and sends on young winger Bailey Rumbelow. What about Jay? What's that? I want it, listen, yeah, I wanted Lockie to stay on and try and get on the score sheet, mate. It was a tough call. It's important to me as my top scorer. Yeah, it's important to me. The game has come alive. Chow would push forward looking to kill it off, and Tom Tennant is unlucky to hit the post from the edge of the box. Come on! Yeah! Luke Parsons then finds himself in a goal-scoring position, only to drag his shot wide and blame his strike partner for the miss. It's enough to make Barks nervous. A ball into the box isn't cleared by Ollie Tennant and Morgan Vale drives home. The impossible comeback is taking shape. Chow would again look for a fourth as Rumbelow attacks down the right and combines with Mike Smith to set up Kevin Locke but the club's all-time leading goal scorer hits the seemingly popular post. With seconds on the clock, Uckfield drive forwards and win a free kick in a dangerous area. They send everybody forwards, packing the child box, and then they play it short. Squeeze! Squeeze! It's arguably the worst set-piece plan of the season. 1v1, he's blowing Kev! He's blowing Kev! Knock it and go! Yellow shirts stream forward like a golden cavalry. Kevin Locke slips it inside to Michael Smith, whose redemption arc after that dodgy Simbin is completed with a finish so cool it left Frost on the net. We're on a journey here, and the journey's going to end with us winning the league. 
Now that was not a champion's performance. Our journey is to be celebrating with trophies. This club's used to winning with trophies and champagne flying everywhere. But, like he said, second half, I can't fault you. 20 minutes in, there was intensity in the game, there was tempo in the game, and we took it to them. We haven't really played as well as I know we can play yet, and we're three from three. So what does that say about us? What does that say about us as a squad? 100% record, three games from three, nine points from a possible nine, and we haven't really hit full stride yet. But we have to next week. We have to next week because we're away at Hollington and it's a big game and we can't start like that. So next week, if you had a few beers last night, maybe don't do that next time. Because next week, if we start like that, we'll be found out. We're on a journey. Our journey is to win the league. And next week, we really come guns blazing, everyone on it. Because we're a hell of a side, but we haven't really shown it yet this season. I don't think because we are far better than we're showing in patches. Yes, boys. Another win, buzzing again, 100% record. Mike Smith, MOM, well done. Wow. Three games from three, 100% win rate, and we're nowhere near as good as we can be. And that's the frustration. I love them, I'm not angry at them, but I'm angry at I know how good we can be, and I know how we should be playing, and we're so far off it at times. In spells, yes. Second half, 20 minutes, yes. Tempo, intensity, you probably felt it watching, I could feel it. Then it drops off again. We just got to keep that quality, but keep that tempo. Maybe we're better when teams are playing at us. Maybe next week when the team's coming out. But it's a tough, tough game next week. And if we do that next week, I'll be biting my nails because we'll be hanging on. Next week, Hollington, we beat them in the cup final last year. They finished second in the league. They're out for revenge. And we've got to be at it with a bit of aggression and a bit of tempo from the start. Next time on Bunch of Amateurs. We've had four goals this allowed, I've never seen a nice hit. Throwing the ball straight in his face from about two yards. He's throwing it down the line. And we will absolutely stuff them. We are the better team, every neutral can see it. Do what you want to us, we keep going, we're resilient, we stick together. We've got more tales to bring you from season one, so hit subscribe and you won't miss a thing.